It's a Stellar's J, stitched by hand using fabric and thread. Do you love this little guy as much as I do? I'm gonna walk you through the process. In this video, I've included so much more of the stitching so that you can really see that it is a slow stitching process that's so enjoyable. Sometimes I stitch and I don't talk, so I've included those parts. I've sped them up and I've added music. So if you just wanna watch some stitching, that is included throughout. So a lot of times there's maybe a minute, a minute and a half of just stitching, and then I'll talk for maybe a minute. And it goes back and forth like that. So there's a little bit of everything in this, and it really shows more of the process than I've ever shown before. So have a look at my inspiration photos. These are two of the Jays who frequently visit, who are just delightful and full of personality, and they're the inspiration for this piece. And I think of my style as closer to folk art than photorealistic, so I'm not trying to look exactly like a Stellar's J, but I'm just taking inspiration from what I see. That includes their personality and the spirit that I sense in them. So let's get started. So I just drew the shape of the bird, in this case it's a J, onto some cardstock and I cut it out and this is my template. And then I trace my template onto fabric and I cut it out. And if there's more than one piece, then I cut it out of more than one piece of fabric. So here is my J and I have stitched it together just very lightly and now I'm ready to make my collage. I'm using felt. This is a very soft felt that I get from my local fabric store. Well, it's not crispy. You could also use wool. In this case I'm using acrylic felt. And then I have my bird and I've pulled in some brightly colored fabrics that I thought would look good against the blue of the bird. So I really, look at that contrast. I really like that piece. So that may be nice. Now I'm just going to pull fabrics and see what works. This is the same color blue, although it's a different fabric. Th this, these two pieces are actually from a dye session I did with muslin, so it's a heavier, more textured fabric. And this is cotton lawn. It's much thinner, you can almost see through it. But the color's the same, very, very close, the way that it took the dye. I may add some blue, but there's a lot of blue there happening with the birds, so I'm thinking oranges and yellows and greens are what I initially thought are my collage. Think about placement of the bird. He could be right in the middle. He could be the bottom. So that's something to think about too. This darker piece, it's like a navy blue. I really like the look of that against the orange, so I think I would like to have this orange behind the head. So I'm just playing around with colors and pieces and building the collage. 
and there's two things that I'm thinking about. One is that the piece that I am working on, the piece of felt, is not completely square. It's a little bit wider than it is tall. So it is, let's see, about four and maybe four and a quarter tall and maybe like four and three quarters wide. So just a little bit wider. And I'm noticing it as I'm building this collage, mainly because this piece of fabric I'm working on is shorter. Um, and I think that one of the things I'm thinking of is to square it up so that it is a square. And the nose, the beak, sorry, the beak of this bird and the tail mean that this is quite a big bird. And it actually does fit nicely on this width. But I may just slice it down a little bit, which may mean that... I have to either alter my collage or alter the size of the bird by making his tail a little shorter or something. So those are the things I'm thinking about moving forward. Before I finalize the collage, I'm taking a step back and thinking about the size. The other thing I'm going to do now, I think at this point, is cut away some fabric in the feet. So I have drawn on the other side, sort of, you know, a rough idea of what the feet are going to look like. So my options are to completely cut off this foot area and to only do the feet with embroidery floss or to leave some fabric there and to either cut it off later or to stitch on top of the fabric that's left. Because it's such a bright color, I think that I want to remove at least part of it to begin with and see how I feel about that because it's be becoming a color element um, that's actually not going to be there. The feet of the bird I'm going to do in gray. They're not going to be blue. So that's not perfect, but I think it helps me a little bit. Now that I see that, I don't actually like the placement where I've ended up placing the feet. I think this foot should come out more here. It's funny because on this side, it looks a bit better, but they're not actually in the right place. So here we go. I'm going to just remove them all together. And then I will add them with embroidery floss. And if it's important for me when I'm building my collage, I have this little piece here that I can sort of use. I don't think I need it though. So now I'm going to think about squaring up this piece of felt that's underneath. Nothing stitched down at this point. Everything's loose and I'm not worried about it because I hadn't settled at this point on a collage that I was really happy with. So I'm just going to make this square. Okay, this is more square now. It's about a four and a quarter inches square. And now I can build a collage.
So I'm building a collage. I've removed the feet area of the J because it's going to be in gray. And now I'm just going to find the colors and complete this collage. This is the initial collage I'm going to start with and so now I'm going to baste it down and the way that I like to baste is with basting stitches. There's so many different ways to baste things down. You can use pins, you could use a dot of glue. Some people have sticky back fusible on all their pieces of fabric and they place them and move them around and then when they have everything the way they want it they iron it down. That's a brilliant way to work. For me for whatever reason, I find I really enjoy the process of basting pieces in place. I think because it makes me, uh, it's, it, it keeps me in a place of creativity where I feel like it's temporary. I can always move things. And if I just have one small stitch, I can always adjust things slightly. So it keeps me in a creative space. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and find matching threads as close as I can to all of these pieces and then baste them in place. I'm just finishing up basting down these green pieces and I chose to baste these first because by basting these tiny pieces I'm securing what's underneath them. So I've got these orange and yellow pieces secured. I haven't got this one secured, but I've got a lot of things secured just by doing these. And I have the bird left and this that are completely loose. Now I can go around with the other colors that I've just pulled. I used this green and I've decided to use this yellow, this for the orange. I liked both these blues for the darker part of the J and this color was a good match for the other part of the bird, the lower part, the blue, blue part. So now that I've got this green secured, I don't even usually knot it. I just snip it off. And I'm going to continue basting now. my basting stitches to show, I will use one strand of floss. In this case, I'm using two strands, which is what I usually use in stitching because I don't mind if they show up. just moving around and I'm trying not to pull too tight I don't want anything to pucker just want to hold it in place 
So I'm gonna take one more stitch over at this edge and then a couple down at the bottom. And then that'll be it for this color of blue. Yeah, so that's it for that. So as you can see here, don't knot it, just take a small stitch and leave the end. But at the beginning, I do put a knot just to make things easier. So there's that part of the bird. Now I'll do the top part. I'm just going to go around the edges of the bird. I'm trying to keep everything flat with my thumb here. And I'm trying not to pull too hard. This is really just holding everything on. This piece came off. That's okay. I know where it goes. And I will do that next. I think I'm going to do stitching hold the beak down at this point. I'm just going to go around. And then I think I'll do one in the middle. Okay, and that's it. Okay, next I'm going to stitch this on and come over here and tack some of this other yellow around the piece. So I've jumped ahead a little bit here and I've completed some stitching on the bird. He has feet, his body, I've given him an eye, and I've completed the basting. So now I'm going to do some creative stitching where I'm just stitching, no talking, and some music.
I hope you enjoyed that little musical interlude. That was double speed, so it shows you how long it really takes to just do this minimal amount of stitching. And that's why it's such a relaxing process, and it is slow stitching. And if I had it at regular speed, it would just be a really long video. And I think that at twice the speed, you can still enjoy it and see all the different stitching that goes into it. So at this point where we're at is there's some stitching along the bottom, including the little feet. There's a little bit of stitching on this blue part of the bird and some stitching at the top of the dark part of the bird is very peak around his eye. And then of course, all of these marks that I've made in the orange and the yellow. So I would say at this point, it's not even half done. And um, I'm just going to continue now with some mark making around the bird and add a bit more stitching to the bird. I'm going to bring in this sea green, very dark color, because I think that in terms of value, it's similar to the colors in the bird, but it is a green and we have some green here. And so I thought that it would be good to have a color value as strong as this, some other places in the piece. And um, this is sea green, very dark. And I do have three other colors of sea green going lighter and lighter and lighter. So if I wanted to continue with sea green, I've got some options for adding in some lighter values of that. I'm gonna start by adding some of the sea green at the bottom. I'm just gonna do some mark making here. See how I feel about the color. And then that will lead me to a decision about what kind of marks I want to make, how close together I want them to be. Do I want them to be like these other ones I've made or do I want them to be different? I'm starting over in the yellow and moving into the green. Just to see how I feel about it. So I'm spacing them apart so I have room to fill in. If I want it to be a more of a bold line and if I don't then the spacing of these are very similar to the green the lighter green stitches that are already here I'm just kind of stepping back and I'm just taking a look at the marks. The value is very similar to the values in the bird, so I like that. I think I'm going to go beyond this green piece and stitch a little further. And then I'm going to work my way back. I'm going to make the line a little stronger. Put stitches in between my stitches. Sometimes rotating a piece or turning it upside down is a really helpful way to see it in a different way. Gives you a new perspective and it can help you decide if you're liking the way that your stitches look or if it's balanced in terms of the rest of the piece. So I'm not afraid to 
just stitch it at, at any orientation angle. The combination of seeing it a different way and doing what feels comfortable in my hand. And my goal right now is to make this line thicker and I'm also not making my stitches even in terms of trying to make a straight line. I'm purposely trying to make kind of a wonky wavy line. I'm liking the way that looks. I'm going to hop up here. It's just a decision I'm making in the moment to make another mark right about here. This time I'm placing my stitches closer together like these are because at this point I'm feeling more confident about the thickness of the line I want to make. So now by putting these stitches where I am in the orange, I'm seeing this color in a different way. I'm seeing what it looks like against orange. Here I saw what it looked like against yellow and green. So this is another way to see this color. And I think against the orange, this color looks even darker. I like the way that's looking. I'm going to continue this line into the green like I did here. Switching to back to the stab stitching instead of stitching from the front because it seems like the other way I was stitching was pulling this little piece of fabric. So if you go up and down, it changes sometimes the way that the fabric pulls. And see there's some white here, so I'm just trying to pull this yellow up a little bit. tiny pieces wanting to curl up so I think I'm going to do a little bit more stitching just a couple more stitches lower in this tiny patch of fabric to keep it in place one more here And I think I'm going to hop over here to this little part where I think I want to, there to be a little more of this color. I just want the line to be a little darker here. Yeah, that's looking better. Okay, I'm running out of thread. I'm just gonna knot off. Okay, and I'm just gonna gently flatten that area. 
that heavy stitching is just pull it in a bit but flattening will set it right so I like that adding that color so now I'm going to use a different shade of this sea green this is the sea green medium so I have just finished using the darkest and there's one that's in between them it's very close and there's one that's lighter I'm using this one and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some marks up in this area. So if you watched my mark making with these orange and yellow that had no talking and just some music, you may have noticed that what I do when I make these lines is I go across one way and I work back the other way, filling in between the initial stitches that I made. So that's what I'm doing here. With this color. Decide how long I want to make it. I'm going to go a little further. I think that's long enough. So now I'm going to work my way back. Depending on how I make the marks, I could make this wider, I could make it taller in either direction, or I could do a bit of both, which is the idea I'm thinking of now, is to just do a little bit of doing stitches that are higher and lower. What I mean by that is higher and lower than my initial line of stitches. So what that will do is it will widen the entire mark. Here, I think I like that line. So I'm going to nod off there. You can really see against the white here at the back that this color is quite a bit lighter than the one down here, whereas on the front it's not as noticeable at this point in contrast. But it's, it actually is quite a bit lighter. So I could also come in with this lighter color if I wanted even more of a contrast between dark and light, which I probably will do. And now I'm going to make a mark like this up at the top. I think I want to make a smaller mark, smaller line, shorter line than this one. Just see here how long I want to make it. So the green I had used down here is a moss green and the other green I had used to baste these patches is a chartreuse. So I'm coming back in with this color and adding some green down here now. This shade is darker than the moss color. It's closer to the color of these patches. So I think it's going to add just another layer of dimension. What I'm thinking about is grass and greenery And so I think using multiple shades is a really good way to just hint at 
the way the light catches the grass or whatever type of greenery is around the colors of green growth is it's an endless variety of shades so this is what's on my mind so I'm stitching part of the slow stitching process for me is thinking about nature and the outdoors and and just relaxing and When I'm not outside, I can enjoy it again. Now I'm switching to Chartreuse, which is a slightly darker shade of this lighter Chartreuse. I'm going to add another color element at the bottom. It's very subtle what I'm doing here with these multiple shades, but I like the effect it gives and I enjoy the process of slightly altering the color. It may or may not be seen or noticed in the final product, depending on who's looking at it and how close they're able to see everything. But for me, the process, being equally important to the outcome. I enjoy switching up the colors. These color differences in these lighter green colors are very, very slight. Working this way means I'm able to come back in an area where there's already stitching and find little gaps and areas where I can add new stitches and fill it in. And it's a really nice way to work in terms of adding color and texture and just building up stitch on stitch on stitch. The key here is to not pull too tight to try and get a tension that's just the right balance between a stitch that's too loose, it's not going to lie flat, and pulling it so tight that everything gathers in on itself. Part of the slow stitching is allowing gathering in many cases and really it's about letting that happen when you want to, letting it be more exaggerated when you want to, and letting it be more subtle when you want to. I'm at a place now where I still have quite a bit left on my needle. So I'm going to turn Take a quick look. And I'm gonna make one more pass with this same color. Okay, I'm coming to the end of this piece of floss. So, I'm going to knot off. Now, because I've done quite a bit of stitching right along the bottom, you can see it's buckling a little bit. So, just give it a little gentle tug. This is part of the process as everything gets buckled and it's actually quite nice. It's one of the things I like about it. You just try and control it a tiny bit, but for the most part, just let it happen. I don't worry about this piece being perfectly square. If I put it up against my grid here, I can see maybe there's a little bit of bowing along the bottom, but I'm not worried about it. 
doesn't have to be perfectly square. And I'm liking this texture down here. I'm going to start adding stitching in this area to start matching the amount of stitching here just to keep everything even. Thinking about my orange and yellow tones and I've been using this canary color yellow and I'm going to bring in this topaz color because I think it looks really nice with everything. There isn't this color in the fabric but it looks nice against all of the other colors and it's enough of a contrast with the yellow that's there that it's going to show up in a way that the canary color doesn't. So like with all the other uh, stitching I've been doing, I'm using two strands of the floss. I've decided to surround this green patch of fabric with stitches. It's going to integrate the green with the yellow and it's also adding another slight variation on that canary yellow color with this darker shade. So I'm working my way around and then I'm going to continue the stitching onto the yellow. So the line will just parallel the orange one that's above it and I'm going to have relatively the same thickness with that piece. Now I'm re-threading and I'm using my wax because this thread wants to tangle and I'm coming back in on the other side at the bottom of that yellow piece of fabric and I'm making a line to match the orange one above it. And my process is the same in creating this line where I go back and forth. I go across in one direction, leaving spaces between my stitches. And then I turn and go back and fill in stitches and I keep them uneven. Now I'm going to do a round of blanket stitch.
I still have some blue left on my needle, so I'm gonna add some stitches to the bird. And now that I'm on the bird, I'm just going to continue on his little head, adding some stitches here.
Now I've switched to orange and I want to do some traditional slow stitches that are just in and out in this area here. So I've done some slow stitching lines on this side and I want to continue and do it here. And I wanted to show something that is possible to do, not necessary, but using a marker, this is a marker that disappears. Um, a lot of times the ones that's purple, it's not permanent, it will disappear with air. Some of them like this one have an end where you can actually erase it before the air gets to it. But visually, it may be important to have these lines sort of line up so it looks like the stitching is continuing behind the bird. And I think I might like that here. So my idea is to look at the lines I've done and to make some marks just so I know how far apart these lines are and where they would be if it was a continuing line. And it's not exactly precise, but it's close enough so that I think visually it will give that effect of a continuous line doing a little bit over here and here and see it's very very faint because the color is similar but I can see it you may not be able to see it on camera but it's enough for me to know where I want my stitching line to be so if I had done this mark, you know, down here in the yellow, it shows up quite a bit better and the, it will disappear in the air or I can use this other end to rub it out and now it's wet, it's gonna dry and be gone. So now I've got my marks and I can continue my stitching. So I'm following the lines that I made with the marking and I'm doing a combination of stitches where I'm either going in and out in a traditional slow stitch method or I'm doing a stab stitch where I'm making one stitch at a time going all the way to the back and the front and it really just depends on the spot I'm stitching in, how much space I have in front of me, if I know where I'm going, if I'm changing direction. And so whatever works is what I do. And I'm just filling in the lines so that it appears to be continuous lines in the background of this J. This is adding both color and texture. And as I finish up, 
doing these straight stitches, I'm going to continue to add marks and color to the piece. First by adding gray around the border and around the grass area and then switching to the topaz yellow color and stitching on top of that yellow strip behind the bird on both sides. So I like the way that these lines are looking and I've decided to add some more and I'm switching to this moss green color. So this color has more yellow in it than the other green that I was using, like this chartreuse, these shades. And so my thought process about that is that I'm bringing in a bit of the yellow and the green and it's sort of a transition color and it's gonna go right in this orange area here. I've looked at the lines I've added in the green and I've decided now that I want more marks on the edges. So I'm adding these thick lines of turquoise. It's color, it's mark, it's, you know, what you do when you're doing this is you just, you go back and forth and you add in different areas. And so at this point, I really feel like I just need these turquoise marks. I have this lightest sea green color Earlier, I had used the darkest sea green down here and a mid-tone sea green here. And I thought I would come in with the lightest shade of sea green and add some stitches in this area.
I wanted to add some color around the piece. So I've gone and added areas of blanket stitching in the blue color that matches this part of the J and then a little bit of green that matches these patches. And I'm happy with where it's at now in terms of the color. And now I need to look at it and evaluate and decide what, if any, more stitches are needed in the background. So I've decided that I do want to add more to the background of this piece. And so I'm starting with this green patch of fabric that I had outlined, but I had not filled in and it was looking blank to me. So I've just come in with a color that matches quite closely and I'm adding some straight stitches to it. Then I'm going to turn my attention to the orange stitches that I had done slow stitching style in the background. And what I'm going to do is change them from being straight stitches to being little crosses. You could also call them plus signs. And I'm not doing it to every single straight line, but I'm doing it to a lot of them. And this is adding another level of interest. And I think that it's making it blend in more with the other areas where there's heavier stitching. So I just move around and it's a really intuitive process in terms of which stitches I'm adding this extra line to turning them into the crosses and which ones I'm leaving. And I'm just going to move around from one side to the other until it looks really balanced. I'm bringing in the darker shade of sea green. So it's not as dark as the sea green that I've used in the bottom, but it is darker than the sea green that's in the upper area of this piece. And so I'm enhancing the sea green marks that are there. So there'll be two shades of that. And then I'm going to look around the piece and see if there's some more areas where I wanna have these marks. So I've decided that I need to have more crosses. So I'm switching back to the orange and I'm moving around from the top here and I'm going to go all the way around the entire area where I've put my first round of crosses and just seeing if there's spots that need more and filling them in.
And then I decide that I want to have more orange in the top area. So you kind of tie it in to the area with the orange crosses. It becomes more of a bold color, bold marks with the crosses. And I feel like I want to carry that up into the top. But instead of making crosses, I'm just making some straight stitches. And I'm moving across that area where there's sort of a, a strip of yellow in the background. And it has a bunch of different marks at this point with different colors. And I feel like the orange is really going to tie everything together and unify it. So I'm just adding those. And um, again, it's an intuitive process in terms of where I'm making the marks. I'm not trying to make particularly straight lines or make them the same length. I'm just going through and making little marks. Then I'm continuing in the orange and I'm adding some blanket stitch in some of the spots around the edges that don't already have a color. I think it's a good idea to sort of integrate all the different colors that I'm using in the piece. And so I still have some of the orange on my needle. And so I'm just going to move around and find some small spots that have less stitching, less color, and add some of the orange. And now I've switched to the very dark gray color that I've used in the piece, and I'm doing the same thing where I'm adding some areas of more dense color all around the piece. I feel like this piece is really going to benefit from having a multicolored border instead of a solid color to frame it like some of my pieces. This multicolored look really will set off all the bright colors in this piece and just make them sing. So I'm almost finished at this point. I've added quite a bit of edging and more detail. And I'm going to bring in another shade of green. This is a pistachio green, and I'm going to add some of the lighter color in a couple of places. But mostly, I want to add this dark color. In terms of value, it's similar to this darkest part of the J. And so I want to just add some underneath and maybe a couple spots somewhere else to balance the piece. If you're someone who knits or crochets, I myself crochet, you'll be familiar with the concept of blocking. And I like to think of what I do near the end of a piece as blocking. You know, part of it is just kind of tugging on it 
and straightening the piece out. And in some cases, like this case, I actually turned it over and ironed it a small amount, just with a tiny bit of steam. And it's the same idea as what you do with a knit or crochet item. So I've hit this with an iron and it has straightened out some of the rippling that was happening from all this stitching I've done around the edges. And I'm liking the way that it looks. So I've added this dark color, this pistachio color in here. I've added some of the light pistachio in a couple of other places. So I'm feeling like this is done. I'm going to step away and come back to it with fresh eyes and see if there's anything else that I think it needs. But in the meantime, I have to pet this little Stellar's J. I love this little Stellar's J. He reminds me so much of the Stellar's J's that come almost every day for peanuts to my feeder. They're a little bossy, they're kind of loud, and they're absolutely delightful. So this guy's done. I stepped away, I came back, and I feel like he's finished. The background has lots of color and texture. The bird seems to have the personality. And I think he's very, very sweet. I'm gonna show some close-up pictures so you can see some details. And I'm gonna remind you of my inspiration pictures. And thank you so much for staying till the very end. I hope you enjoyed this longer version. I'm so happy with the way he turned out. Thank you so much for joining me. Please check out my other videos, ask questions if you have them, and we'll see you next time. Bye.